So, so I had an epiphany today and it's actually not a hashed out idea yet. It's more of a concept in my mind, but I'm going to try to flesh it out in a live way as I record this and see if I can't work through some of what I think is going on in my head. My concern is that we as a society, and I don't want to make the delineation between generations, right? I'm going to, I'm going to speak about generations, but I don't want to delineate between this generation is causing this problem and this generation is not. I want to make a statement broader about what we as a society are doing. And it's re- concerning specifically conservative ideals versus liberal progressive ideals versus the concept, and I use the term lightly here, the concept of wokeism. Now, I'm a woke individual. I've, I've been striving for years now uh, through Buddhist practices to find an awakening, to be awakened, enlightened, to understand how our society works, how our universe works, what my place in it is. And it's a it's a tough path to negotiate to understand where I've come from, where I am now, and where I would ultimately like to be. And I think that's something that we all struggle with. And it's, it's really, I, I believe, one of the fundamental purposes that we have in life is to try to just be better and strive to reach a better place. What I believe is happening recently to get to the point of what I want to discuss is that I feel that there is this constant hammer in society right now across the generational gap that that bleeds from generation to generation, the the Xenials to Millennials into Gen X um, that is happening. And I don't include baby boomers for a reason. And I only kind of include Gen X as well. We have lived through the birth and adolescence of social media, the 24-hour news cycle, and globalization. Now, globalization, of course, has a number of negative connotations that come with the effective use of that word. I'm not talking about the political concept of globalization and one government and and, and one economic setup. That's not what I'm talking about. I just mean the fact that something can happen in, in central Turkey and we know about it moments later. Something can happen in Hong Kong and it's world news within 15 minutes. Th- that that piece of globalization, the, the constant stream of access to information worldwide. Now, of course, that does not speak to those societies that are you know excluded from our modern access to digital information. That, that aside... We now, in real time, often unfiltered, receive information from everywhere. Ideas come from everywhere. Now, what happens, in my belief, in this type of a world of constant information is that, like many other things, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Only our loudest voices, really only our most articulate loudest voices are the ones that are heard. Those that can put together a slick social media presentation, those that have access to the finances that allows for a broad audience to be achieved, uh, those that are able to uh, really put together a well thought out reasoned response. Those people, there's many groups, those groups that exist are the ones that get their information out. Oftentimes, somebody with a very well-thought-out idea, perhaps something like mine, uh, but somebody with a well-thought-out idea that doesn't have a slick presentation, that isn't pretty in the face, that doesn't have access to the finances that will allow for a message to get out to a broad audience, those voices aren't heard. And I would make the argument that it's often the most reasonable voices are the ones that are least heard. 
And so right now we are living in a specific period of time, a very specific socioeconomic period of time, a very specific digital period of time in which the voices that are being heard have activist ideas. Now, whether it's transgendered rights, whether it's gay rights, whether it's women's rights, whether it's civil rights, whether it's black, brown, Asian rights, whether it's religious freedoms, whether whatever it is, gun rights, that's another major one that we talk about, the, the financing of police departments and the proper training of police officers, all of these things that are constantly being hammered into our psyche. These are generally the voices of the most extreme that get the most traction when it comes to social media. Now, if you, like me, tend to be more progressive, you're going to hear the progressive voices almost exclusively, especially on TikTok and and even YouTube, because the algorithm knows what you like, that knows what you interact with, and it's going to send you that information. And I believe what happens is, one, we lose access to the other ideas, which I'm not saying that we should listen to hate speech. I'm not saying that we should listen to the fringe of the opposite side. But there are moderate voices out there. And I believe that because we get this echo chamber, this positive feedback loop, this, this you know, I only hear what I react with concept means that we're only hearing things that we fundamentally agree with. And so we tend to, as a society, get split. So those progressive people become more and more progressive. Those conservative people become more and more conservative. And I think that's kind of what's happening. But a lot of people don't go down that rabbit hole. There's a large segment of society, especially, and this is where I go to the generational thing. I am Gen X. I am on the back end of Gen X. Uh, I am as far from the baby boomers as you can be. I'm only a couple years ahead of millennials. I'm on the, the baby side of Gen X. And the boomers, of course, the boomers aren't on TikTok. I mean, maybe some are, but I mean, we're talking about large groups here. The TikTok, the TikTok is not a platform where you see a lot of uh, baby boomers, and and not even really a lot of Gen X. I think I I see a decent amount of Gen X because I am Gen X interacting with Gen X, but I don't think a lot of millennials are seeing Gen Xers. I certainly don't think that Xennials and millennials um, and Gen Zs are seeing Gen X content. Um, so. The good chunk of the older Gen X, and certainly the baby boomers, aren't getting the same kind of, I'm going to call it radicalization, of ideas. The the Because at the end of the day, we all often stigmatize the word radicalization to think bad. But you can be a positive radical, right? A, a fringy lefty who's trying to get universal health care and free education, right? These are not bad ideas. But... It, You can't just dive headlong into an idea without a fundamental backbone and structure of how you're going to implement these things. But often in our activist world, with the fringier side of both leanings of parties, we tend to see this, let's act without any real plan. And so because of that, there's people in the middle that aren't on these social media platforms that are not being radicalized. But when they do get mainstream reaction. So when some of these stronger movements, some of these stronger ideas, some of these um, concepts that build up steam amongst larger groups of people switch away from the social media platforms and find their ways into mainstream media, I hate that damn term too, but find their way onto NBC News or CNN and and argue all you want that CNN is, is... Fringy, it's certainly not. It's still mainstream news source. The New York Times, the Washington Post, the Wall Street Journal even. When we start to see articles about things like uh, Hogwarts Legacy, the, the, the game based on the Harry Potter Wizarding World universe, and all of the... The division that J.K. Rowling has caused with some of her views on transgendered people. It pushes a narrative... All the way to one extreme until it makes its way into the into the, the general population. And so then this group, we'll call it, of people that don't engage daily in social media, that don't hear these 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 really focused concepts, all of a sudden get this 
I don't know what to call it, maybe a filtered down or or even a concentrated version of the concept. So whether it's transgendered race, they don't hear about the normalization that's occurring because it should be that transgender people are in our population. They get more of the anger stories, the the sharing bathrooms, the 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 right now the big one is passing of laws that limit access to transgender people in the, the the public sphere there's stuff coming out of tennessee right now that is atrocious right so that ends up becoming the point the people in the middle that don't pay attention to social media may not be aware of the concept of the movement for transgendered rights so the information that they get and I do realize before I go any further, this has become a very convoluted concept. But those people that do not ride the wave of these concepts, that are not there through social media to see how it's evolved and changed and 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 to hear the positive voices of those people affected in those communities. Those people that only get their information sp- really sporadically from things like the New York Times or or the local news or the NBC Nightly News or ABC Nightly News. Those people get this concentrated, angrier, less informed version of the story and then have to react viscerally and emotionally to what they're seeing and hearing. As these fights, whether they're over student loan forgiveness, abortion, transgendered rights, civil rights, police reform, when this information gets to them, it's hyper-concentrated. And I believe it's pushing Gen X and the younger baby boomers into an even more conservative mindset. And even more, I think as we become more hyper-politicized, those younger people, millennials, Gen Z, that don't feel that they have a place in the more hyper-politicized wings of society are going to fall off. And I think if you are a progressive, liberal, free-thinking, somebody who believes wholeheartedly in everybody's right to express themselves however they would like, and a woman's right to choose, and the and the the concept that a black man does not need to be afraid for his life when he gets pulled over by a cop. You can feel all of those things and then look at some of the things that are happening in our social media sphere, in our society today, and think, wow, I believe all those things, but some of the things that are being said now seem a little extreme. And then it's very easy to fall off and say, well, Maybe I need to open my mind up to other things. I think it's dangerous right now, specifically right now. I think this is very dangerous because while there may not be anything wrong with some more conservative ideas of how one should live their life, I certainly do not begrieve anybody the idea of a balanced budget or the idea of... Uh, keeping more of our manufacturing here in the United States, of uh, promoting job growth, a strong, robust military. I actually, as a former Marine Corps member, um, actually believe wholeheartedly in the right to own a weapon. And all of these things, the modern Republican Party is dangerous. I'm going to say that again. The modern Republican Party is dangerous. Not to say that Republicans are dangerous. Not to say that my father, who's probably voted Republican in the last three or four presidential elections, is dangerous. Not to say that our local um, town representatives, who are almost, I, I believe, exclusively in the town that I live in, Republican, they are not dangerous. I'm talking about the upper hierarchy of the Republican Party, those making national decisions, those that are beholden to large corporate financial donors and who are clearly, clearly making statements and making decisions that seem to indicate that they may side with our foreign enemies. 
that part of the Republican Party is incredibly dangerous. So if we continue to push a social agenda that is increasingly, increasingly going to the left without any regard for pacing and without any regard for the appropriate spreading of information, I feel that's what we're going to end up seeing is more and more people not thinking about how radical the Republican Party is, but rather just thinking, I need to think about something different because I'm losing sight of the direction society is going right now. Now, I don't have an answer to this. That's the crazy thing. I have no I have no answer. I don't know how. I don't know how to slow that down. I don't know how to to temper our approach to social change and to the rights of people in this country. I and 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 certainly not for transgendered. I am not a transgendered person. I don't claim to speak for them. Uh I make every effort I can to understand uh the rapid change at least visually to how we see transgendered people in our society today. Uh, you know, I, I am a very inclusive, welcoming, warm person when it comes to groups that I am not a part of, but there, there certainly is a rapid increase in the presentation and awareness in, in, in the public sphere of transgender people. And for people in middle America that aren't used to seeing this, people that live in small suburban areas or small towns around the country, rural areas, this is brand new for them. And I'm sure kind of scary. You know, the same reason why racism is so prevalent in the United States is because, especially in northern rural areas, you don't see. I, I went to a high school. My entire school district, the year that I graduated high school, there were three black students in my entire school district. It wasn't until I joined the Marine Corps in active duty and found myself in boot camp and Marine combat training and then stationed overseas that I was surrounded by more and more people of other ethnicities. I can't talk. Ethnicities in which I found myself learning about their cultures and thus feeling more comfortable. But people that are not exposed to those groups that they are not used to, when, when it's something new and, 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 and confusing to them, they tend to avoid it. That's where prejudice comes from. And so as more and more and more information that is not normal to them gets, gets put in front of their faces, there's this knee-jerk reaction is occurring. And that's what I'm afraid of. I, 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 maybe, maybe somebody much more intelligent than me, much more trained in, you know, social behaviors can answer my concerns. I, I don't know, but that's the concern I have. It was just my thought for a random Wednesday morning and where my brain is right now. I know it's a lot. Uh, I don't even know how long I've been recording, but I know it's a long time. So, uh, looks like 17 minutes, almost 18. This is something I think about a lot and I, I wish... I wish I had the answers and I wish I had the time or the patience to to seek them out. Right now I'm taking philosophy classes. It's about the best thing I can do, but it gets your it gets your brain going so much. So anyway, uh, if you're finding me wherever you're finding this this video, if you do come across it, comment. What do you what, what do you think? Am I completely off base? Um Again, I'm not becoming conservative. I want to make sure that's abundantly clear. I am not becoming conservative. <laughs> I, I, I have some conservative ideas, but I mean, I, I had them five, 10 years ago. Then that, that doesn't change. Uh, I'm still a, a staunch liberal. I'm very progressive. I'm, I am an admitted socialist and atheist. Like I'm not, I'm not suddenly switching to bat for the other team, but I'm worried that we're losing large chunks of the population to a radicalized, Christian-led Republican ideal, because if they escape the left and head to the right, the right is going to big hugs, man. Here, let's tell you about this other thing. I don't like that. So, anyway, Daily Octane. I don't. I don't post much recently. I've been <laughs> absolutely balls deep in um, in Hogwarts Legacy and playing that game and taking classes and working like crazy. So I have not been posting video much. I'm still trying to figure out my setup, lighting and sound and all that kind of stuff. And obviously I'm growing my hair out, which looks terrible. So anyway, thank you for watching the daily Octane. Give me a comment, give me a like, subscribe, uh, wherever you follow me, feel free to share it with other people. And I'm going to try to post more content. Um, things are slowing down. The sports seasons are calming down. So I'm going to have a little bit more free time going forward and we'll see what I can do again. Thanks for watching and have a great day.